Hello everyone, I am going to make a presentation on CIS parameters definition. Safety instrumental system parameters definition. The video is being taken on behalf of instrumentationtools.com and automationcommunity.com. Kindly watch and subscribe to the channel. Let us understand few parameters essential for CIS safety instrumental system. First one is scenario. Scenario is a sequence of events that results in an undesired consequence we would have seen in the lopa example lopa sheets for each uh, different uh, part of the equipment part of the plant there could be multiple hazard scenarios happening one could be like for the boiler which is having a fuel gas to fire the boiler it may be going for a high pressure due to failure of any control wall this may be one particular scenario or pressure failure in the control wall may lead to wall closing and leading to pressure fuel gas pressure going low this may be another scenario which may result in a different consequence so this particular line item when you look into the low pass sheet it will be numbered as sif001 sif002 sif003 or something or it may depend on the plant uh, documentation wise so this is one scenario initiating event the event that initiates the sequence of events that leads to the undesired consequence the event that sort starts the scenario or determines how often it is occurring this is what i told fuel gas pressure going high due to control valve failure it's one scenario so this is control valve failure is an initiating event in my previous uh, definition independent protection layer a device system or action that is capable of preventing a scenario from progressing to the undesired consequence regardless of the initiating event or the performance of any other protection layer associated with the scenario we have seen about the independent protection layers in earlier presentations also there are multiple protection layers in a process plant starting with the normal control with the bpcs system and uh, operator action to alarm and next uh, safety instrumented system protection layer next comes uh, pressure relief wall ruptured disc like this mechanical safety devices protection and then the plant dikes etc and community alarm like that so each one is acting independently that's why it is known as independent protection layer okay sill values now we are in this table we are seeing the sill values starting from sill 1 to sill 4 it is being tabulated over here sill 1 is uh, sill, uh, first is safety integrity level is the measure of safety system performance this is being done when the initial calculations are being done for the safety system before its installation so sill 1 means the pfd probability of failure and demand it starts from point it is greater than point 0 10 power minus 2 and less than point 1 this is the pfd average for sill 1 actually now all, all our plants are operating in a low demand mode there is another continuous mode or high demand mode also which is for uh, aviation sector and different uh, sectors here that is calculated in the probability failure hour probability of failure and demand this is probability failure per hour this is what we mentioned it is starting from 10 power minus 6 to 10 power minus 5 for the sill 1 category and sill 2 for example it is 10 power minus 3 to 10 power minus 2 in a low demand mode sill 3 is 10 power minus 4 to 10 power minus 3 and sill 4 is 10 power minus 5 to 10 power minus 4 similarly the values for the continuous mode it is in property failure per hour it is described over here in the process industries we will be focusing about the low demand mode of operations only so we give more importance to these particular values for each sill category okay what does sill 2 integrity mean failure of probability of the sif it is starting from 1 into 10 power minus 3 to 1 into 10 power minus 2 this is what tablet over here it is starting from 10, 10, 1, power, uh, 10, 1 into 10 power minus 3 to 1 into 10 power minus 2 this is a pfd average and failure probability of the sif is 0.001 to 0 0.01 this is the equivalent mathematical value here and the sys what does it mean the sys will fail on average once every 100 to 1000 times when any sip is needed there is a probability of failure that can happen every 100 to 1000 times and now there is the 100 demands minimum starting from 100 demands to maximum 1000 demands there is a probability of failing ones that is called sill 2 integrity similarly what is sill 3 integrity for uh, sill 3 it is starting from 1 power 1 into 10 power minus 4 to 1 into 10 power minus 3 we are seeing the same over here in this table so this is the range and failure probability is again 0 0.0001 to 0 0.001 this is a 
failure probability and the sys will fail on an average every thousand to ten thousand times whenever during the demands come from starting from thousand to ten thousand times there is a probability of one failure that is known as sil 3 three forms of proof are required to claim that a sif achieves a particular integrity level how do we measure integrity that is devices should be approved that should be approved suppliers list or sil certified the instruments and valves which are being used in the safety instrumented system they should be from approved suppliers and manufacturers as we have seen in earlier presentations there are different certifying agencies known as XEDA or TUV they are the people who give the certification for the safety instrumented system equipments which means instruments logic solvers and final control elements so every manufacturer who is producing the safety instrumented system related sensors, final control valves and logic solvers, they need to get certified and they have to again abide by the international standard like IEC standard, ANSI standard etc. that uh, approve us who are doing the certification and fault tolerance requirement, this is how long and how far the instrument can capable of handling the fault, uh, fault and probability of failure and demand. These are the three forms of proof that are required to the particular integrity level. First, uh, we are doing, giving a brief uh, description about the previous three points. The first, uh, the devices should be user approved for the operating environment, application and integrity level. Components of new safety instrumented system should be selected to meet the SIL requirements and be listed in the approved suppliers list. Else meets the criteria of Proven in use means um, the same instrument, same type of instrument being used in a different plant which is having an identical installation, meaning it is uh, lying in the similar geographical zone where the ambient conditions, environmental conditions are almost typical. So, whatever the instruments being used in the western world, western countries cannot be 100% quickly adapted or it applied in the similar kind of industries in the Asian region or Asia Pacific region etc. because the weather conditions, environmental condition, these are all totally different from the western part of the world to the Asian part of the globe. So second, the device subsystem should meet the fault tolerance requirements. This is the second point what we discussed over here. They should meet the fault tolerance requirements and third, the overall SIS should achieve the target probability of failure on demand or a demand mode system or if the sys is operating in a continuous mode it should achieve the target frequency of failure necessary to meet the integrity level so this is the probability of failure and demand it has to meet that probability of failure and demand based on this table whatever we have seen for each categories of seal 1 seal 2 seal 3 seal 4 etc so these are the main parameters to ensure that the safety instrument system achieves that particular integrity level. Okay, now next one is probability of failure on demand PFD. The probability of a, a system will fail to perform in a specified function when it is required. Whenever there is a demand for a valve to close, it should work. I mean the instrument air should be healthy without any leak and the solenoid should operate. Solenoid should get a because it is DNA system mostly in the emergency shutdown systems. In the safety instrumented systems, the solenoid should get de-energized and it should uh, allow the air to get vent by that the valve, the main valve to get closed. So, if there is any component failure like there is a filled air filter regulator leaking. So, which may eventually lead to air, uh, air leaking and it, uh, the valve cannot close even though the solenoid valve is working or the solenoid coil is damaged. So, uh, it will receive the power from the logic solver, but it will not operate. And uh, there could be some other mechanical failure on the actuator part or spring part, etc. So, this is the probability of failure and demand. This whenever a demand is placed on the instrument, and there is a probability how it can, how much can, uh, time it can fail. Probability of failure on demand for each system safety instrumented system function shall be equal to or less than the target failure measure as specified in the safety requirement specifications. In the safety requirement specifications, the, these things will be tabulated and the target failure measure will be tabulated. So, that has to meet each components in the safety instrumented function has to meet this one. They shall be verified by the calculations. There are separate calculations to understand about the SIL integrity level. 
and quality of failure and demand etc so that has to be uh, verified and the overall pfd of this function we are talking about pfd pfd all times probability of failure and demand how does it has to be evaluated the probability of failure and demand it's not only the sensor there are three main components to operate on the safety instrumented system one is sensor another one is logic solver another one is the final control elements so the probability failure and demand it should be for the whole system so sensor logic solver and final control elements the result the cvc pfd of the system means uh, it has to be a combination of sensor logic solver and final control elements as a thumb rule the weightage for sensors is 35 percentage so this all put together should be 100 percent the sensors weightage will be around 35 percentage logic solvers will be 15 percentage these are all electronic components they are housed in an electronic control room or it is called as a control cabinet room or marshal room where it is so they are housed in a safe environment and the processes are having redundancy so the probability of failure is very less and third one is final element final element is having more mechanical components like we discussed earlier it is having a solenoid or it is having a actuator maybe having some booster volume boosters or some vent valves etc so the components are more in the final control element part and some cases may be having positioners, some can, some valves may have some partial stroke testing device like that, some device are there. So there are multiple components involved. So the probability of failure on the final control element part is more, that's why it is given a higher weightage of 50 percentage. So this 35 plus 15 plus 50 put together it is 100 percentage. This is a total failure probability for the particular SIF. Okay. How do we understand about the probability failure demand? This is a simple equation for an instant PFD for a SL1 system. This is PFD of uh, PFD is 1 minus e power minus lambda into t. Lambda is the failure rate per year and t is the time constant. PFD is a function of the device failure rate and time. As the time goes on, if the device has in failed date, its probability of failing is increases because every system is in the operation they are subjected to continuous service they are continuously they are drawing the process for the sensors they are drawing the process fluid or process gas to do the measurement also it is being affected by the outside ambient environment and the ambient may be hot weather or cold weather in some countries or it could be some dusty weather some areas it is um, having a lot of moisture like that they are subjected to different weather conditions uh, and there could be some areas uh, with snow also they will be provided with some warm streamlined jacketing etc and some areas are put, uh, having continuous rains so they have to be protected the instrument has to be protected so that's why there is a proof testing there is one more uh, testing requirement known as proof testing which is being calculated and provided for each instrument based on the number of sensors or number of final elements available so they have to go through the proof testing requirement so time goes on and the fire instrument is still healthy and it's working there is a probability of failing is getting increased so this is one concern operation and maintenance has to take care and do the regular proof testing and ensure that the instruments are healthy and work as good as new okay if the mean time to fail is one year then 10 years probability of failure will be virtually 100 percent there is one more parameter known as mean time to fail so if it is one years then for the 10 years the probability of failure becomes 100 percentage so that has to be taken care by the maintenance people a component without repair inevitably reaches the failed state so that's what the testing proof testing has to be done whenever any component for the metal valves there could be a lot of internal you know warings mechanical seals etc available inside the valve part and on the and also on the actuator part they have to be replaced at the routine intervals say for example if the manufacturer is recommended for five years or eight years interval that has to be those seals and uh, o-rings like that has to be re replaced otherwise uh, due to the weather conditions they may get uh, deteriorated and fail at any point of time so that has to be ensured by maintenance teams and the records has to be kept this is a different topic like a documentation part so the component is running without any repair so then it is a probability of getting into a failed state is quite high 
that has to be avoided by the operation and maintenance uh, teams so for the safety instrumented system higher focus has to be given and the maintenance and proof testing has to be done as per the calculated tables so this is a part of the maintenance stream and it has to be recorded okay thank you